The date is January 28th, 1986, and a NASA space shuttle named the Challenger is primed for takeoff. The Challenger lifts off at stratospheric speed, what 78 seconds into its flight, it becomes engulfed in a cloud of fire. A presidential commission was appointed to investigate the disaster, and one of its members, inquisitive by nature, deconstructed the mechanics of what went wrong with uncompromising clarity. That was Richard Feynman, not just one of the greatest scientists to have ever lived, but one of its most captivating communicators. In history, there have been many great minds, but few are also great explainers, empowered with the gift of demystifying the complexity of scientific concepts and articulating them in language that anyone can understand. But Feynman was so much more than a skilled communicator. He was also a philosopher. His childlike fascination with the world and passion for life knew no bounds, as will be illuminated through this letter. Although teaching at some of the world's leading academic institutions and playing an instrumental role in our understanding of the atomic bomb, quantum computing, particle physics and nanotechnology, Feynman did not retreat into an ivory tower. Accessible and personable, Feynman fostered close relationships with his students and those around him. In this letter, Feynman writes a reply to his former student who had written to him expressing exasperation with the type of problems his research centred on and frustration at being a quote, nameless man in physicist circles. Feynman's reply provides some moving advice. I was very happy to hear from you and that you have such a position in the research laboratories. Unfortunately, your letter made me unhappy, for you seem to be truly sad. It seems that the influence of your teacher has been to give you a false idea what are worthwhile problems. The worthwhile problems are the ones you can really solve or help solve. The ones you can really contribute something to. A problem is grand in science if it lies before us unsolved and we see some way for us to make a little headway into it. I would advise you to take even simpler, or as you say, humbler problems until you find some you can really solve easily, no matter how trivial. You will get the pleasure of success and of helping your fellow man, even if it is only to answer a question in the mind of a colleague less able than you. You must not take away from yourself these pleasures because you have some erroneous idea of what is worthwhile. I have worked on innumerable problems that you would call humble, but which I enjoyed and felt very good about because I sometimes could partially succeed. No problem is too small or too trivial if we can really do something about it. You say you are a nameless man. You are not to your wife and to your child. You will not long remain so to your immediate colleagues if you can answer their simple questions when they come into your office. You are not nameless to me. Do not remain nameless to yourself. It is too sad a way to be. Know your place in the world and evaluate yourself fairly, not in terms of the naive ideals of your own youth, nor in terms of what you erroneously imagine your teacher's ideals are. Best of luck and happiness. Sincerely, Richard Feynman. Feynman understood that complex problems are formed of combinations of smaller ones. You cannot expect to solve the greater problems without first tackling the humble ones. One 
must be willing to tug away at the branches before gaining access to the thick roots. And it is with empathy that he articulates this to his former student, concerned for his state of mind, which chased grandeur at the expense of scientific integrity and honour. Feynman's passion for life knew no bounds, but he didn't just impart this advice, he lived it. When asked about his Nobel Prize, he once said, the prize is in the pleasure of finding the thing out, the kick in the discovery, the observation that other people use it. Those are the real things. The honours are unreal to me. Richard Feynman with a letter for the ages.